Hey, hi, hello. I hope you're all doing well and taking care of yourselves the best that you're able to. Uh, I know it's been a while here, but as you may know, one of the things that I'm eager to do with this platform is to review drawing software and devices for beginner digital artists or anyone looking to expand their toolkit. Today I'm one step closer because as you may have guessed from the title and the thumbnail, this is my first ever tablet review. And this is featuring the Voila L sent to me by the kind folks over at Veek. A quick unboxing scores you a neat soft drawing glove that's double-sided so you technically use it on either hand, the tablet, which we'll get into in a second, some replacement pen nibs and a tool to help change them out, a USB-C phone adapter so that you can plug in the tablet to your phone or any other USB-C device, which if your phone can run a drawing program, this is a pretty thoughtful addition. Next is a standard USB-C cord for the tablet itself since the tablet is not wireless. They have also included some replacement keycaps for customization. And of course, last included is the pin, which comes in this nice felt case. Coming back to the tablet itself, it feels really well made for how budget friendly it is. It has a matte finish, so there's a little bit of texture to it. And there's also no slip pads on the bottom to help keep it in place on your desk. The Walla L has a decent 10 inch by 6 inch active drawing area, and my personal favorite feature is it has four buttons and a dial up in the top left corner, all of which are programmable to whatever hotkeys or macros that you want. The button in the middle of the dial has two programmable settings that you can switch between. To the right, we have four other programmable keys that you can set to any single hotkey that you like. My suggestion is to program them to something that you use frequently because these things are really fun to press and they make some very satisfying noises. Now when I tested out the tablet, I set the two dial hotkeys so that I could increase and decrease my brush size, and then I also set it to zoom in and out of the canvas. The first two buttons on the right were set to undo and redo. The third button was set to my ink pen tool, and the fourth button was set to the move tool so I could quickly move around the canvas. Onwards to the drawing pen. This pen is battery free, which means you don't have to charge it at all. Uh, it has 8,192 pressure levels. Side note, this is the same amount of pressure that my main drawing tablet has. It also has two programmable buttons on it, which I set to pen tool again and then eraser, since the pen itself doesn't have an eraser feature on the opposite end. It's a basic pen, there's nothing really fancy to it, um, it's super lightweight and it gets the job done. When it came time to actually draw on the tablet, I'm not gonna lie, I struggled a little bit. I've been using screen tablets for the past four years, so going back to my roots of using a plug-and-play basic tablet was pretty interesting. It's the whole hand-eye coordination thing when using one of these tablets that really throws me off. Not to mention, I keep wanting to use my hand gestures for the undo and redo buttons. Uh, it was just a little bit of a learning curve again. For the sake of the demo, I decided to show my entire process from sketch to finish, which I never really do because sketching takes me the longest and it's usually full of trial and error and general frustration. I knew going into this though that I wanted to draw a sporty monster babe. Uh, this one's going to be a vampire tennis player, but at first I really didn't know how I wanted to make her look. I knew that I wanted her to have a visor hat, either buck vampire teeth or at least a missing fang. Uh, she'd have some sort of exaggerated pigtail hairstyle and a chunky shoe, but that's all I really had in mind. Originally, I was thinking a volleyball player would be fun since vampires don't get along well with the sun, and when I think of volleyball, I think stereotypically of like beachy summer vibes. Maybe I'd have her with like an oversized ball or something. But then I figured maybe a tennis player vampire chick with a big racket would be fun to draw, especially since I like drawing objects or weapons that are larger than they should be. I pushed the concept a little further and I made the racket shaped like a coffin and the tennis string design mimicked like a spider web. Of course, since she's a vampire, I had to add a little bat boy who would retrieve the ball. From there, I just made up some scraps of lore. First was her name. I googled some tennis terms and I made a short list of the ones that I liked. Ace was an obvious choice. Uh, lob was an other option, but it felt like it would suit kind of like a slime character more. Something about the word lob feels gooey to me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Chip was also a contender since I knew that I wanted to have her have a missing tooth or something. But I ended up setting on love, which means having zero points in the game. 
I then use the good old Google Translate to find out that the word love in Japanese is I, which then would be her name. Side note, I did a similar method when creating a very particular OC that everybody seems to like. Uh, that might have to be for another video though. <laughs> But moving on back to our tennis vampire babe. Uh, I figured it would be pretty tragic to have this happy-go-lucky vampire who just wants to be a tennis player because she loves playing the game, but then she loses every single match that she's ever in, just like her namesake suggests. And maybe she's so bad that she even lost a fang or something from a freak tennis ball training accident. Regardless, in true protagonist style, she's going to persist and maintain that cheerful disposition. Color palette wise for her, I wanted something that felt retro 90s ice cooler vibe, but I wanted something that was also kind of stereotypically vampire with darker colors. I kind of settled on like a synth wave palette and guessed from there. I'm honestly pretty stoked on how she turned out in the end, and you really wouldn't have guessed that I didn't use my regular tablet to draw her. All in all, the Walla L is a great tablet for somebody starting out in digital art via laptop or desktop. And it can also be used on a smartphone using that little USB-C adapter. Aside from the budget-friendly price, I think that the hotkeys and the dial make it stand out amongst other entry-level tablets. Those were certainly my favorite features of the tablet. So if you're in the market for your very first drawing tablet, or if you simply want to try something new, you can use code WALATABBY on their Amazon page for 5% off. And finally, I want to thank Veek again for reaching out and sending me the Walla L to try out and experiment with. This was a really fun time, and I hope to do more of this in the future. Thanks! See you guys later!